For Friends of Liberty was a group made up of American patriots who fought for independence from Britain. The group was started by Samuel Adams, and they were formed to protect the rights of the colonists against the excessive taxes by the British government. The Sons of Liberty are best known for their role in the Boston Tea Party. Here is a copy of an announcement of a meeting with the Sons of Liberty. They are instructed of the date and time to meet under the Liberty Tree. The Liberty Tree was shown in the previous picture. Here is a picture of the Sons of Liberty flag. It was entitled the Rebellious Stripes Flag. It has nine stripes on it representing the Loyal Nine. Little is known about the Loyal Nine because they worked informally and were semi-secretive. The Loyal Nine likely identified the targets of violence and may have set boundaries about how far violence and demonstrations should go against Britain. Later, the Loyal Nine merged into the Sons of Liberty. Sammy Adams graduated from Harvard College. He was one of the many that signed the Declaration of Independence and was a member of the Massachusetts Legislature. Adams was the lead member in the Sons of Liberty. Samuel Adams is praised for his steering of the colonists toward independence. Adams was nicknamed the father of the American independence. John Hancock also attended Harvard College and was the first to sign the Declaration of Independence and was the president of the Continental Congress. Hancock became a very wealthy man by inheriting a shipping company. He used his wealth to support the colonial cause before and during the American Revolution. Hancock was one of Boston's greatest leaders during the Revolution. Patrick Henry was an invested promoter of the American Revolution. Henry was the governor of Virginia. He is most remembered for his speech, Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death. Later, after the Revolution and Constitution, Henry helped adopt the Bill of Rights. The French and Indian War was fought over land. Britain wanted land west of where they were, the problem being that land belonged to the French. Both Britain and France allied with different Native American tribes. France was defeated and the land went to Great Britain. Shortly after the war was won, a proclamation line was established. This was to keep the colonists off of Native American land. The colonists were furious. They had just fought a war for that land and now they couldn't even build on it. They didn't think that that was fair at all. Paul Revere is famous for his midnight ride. He rode through town warning colonists that the British were coming. Or did he? Paul Revere was British, so that statement would have been confusing. What he actually said was the regulars are coming. That's what they called the Redcoats. While Paul Revere is famous for the ride, he had help. William Dawes and Samuel Prescott rode with him and actually finished the ride. Revere was stopped by British officers. He gets the credit for the ride because Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote a famous poem about Paul Revere specifically. The Stamp Act was the first direct tax on the colonists and the real start of the revolution. Parliament put taxes on legal documents, newspaper, and even playing cards. The tax was very inflammatory. The 13 colonies formed the Stamp Act Congress after that. The colonies, who had separate money, laws, and just about no similarities, finally had a reason to work together. After the Stamp Act, Parliament got the idea to put out yet another tax, because the first one went over so well. The Townsend taxes were introduced not long after the Stamp Act. Townsend put direct taxes on glass, paper, lead, paint, and, pay attention to this one, tea. Colonists were annoyed with these taxes, so to show their annoyance, they started a boycott. They wouldn't buy British goods. They made their own clothes and grew their own food. The Chancellor in Britain decided to break this up, so he sent an army of redcoats to keep things under control. After the army is sent in, Parliament passes another act called the Tea Act. The colonists were British, so they drank a lot of tea. Britain didn't actually tax tea, but they made them buy East India Trading Company tea, and that brand was expensive. So the Sons of Liberty decide that they are going to protest this act. They dress up like Native Americans and dump 342 crates of tea into the Boston Harbor. After the French and Indian War, colonists wanted to be represented in British Parliament. Parliament would tell them that they were virtually represented in Parliament, but that wasn't enough. 
not being involved made colonists feel like they weren't viewed as real Britons. The chance colonists used was no taxation without representation, meaning that they didn't want to pay taxes for Britain unless they were represented in Congress. After the Boston Tea Party, the Chancellor of Britain wanted to punish the colonists, so he granted representation to Canada, but not America. The colonists were furious, and the revolution was born. <laughs>